Full Body Tracking It's a feature of virtual reality that is essential if we want to get complete immersion. But it's also something that most people you find in virtual reality aren't going to be using. Whether it's because of price or because of ease of use, that's something that's slowly beginning to change. Multiple different projects are sprouting up, allowing users to not only create their own full body tracking devices, but also make them a lot cheaper, smaller, and some not even requiring trackers at all. Two of these projects you might be aware of, Stonks and Slime VR. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the updated version of Slime VR. We've taken a look at the project multiple times before, but it's gone through a massive overhaul and they're getting closer and closer to shipping. So today, we're going to see how the project is doing, its new updated firmware, its new updated UI, its tracking capabilities, and all the new features they've added, as well as the fact that the project works completely with Quest Standalone. So what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, I hope you're all having a fantastic day, and let's jump right into this video. So these are Slime VR trackers. If you've never seen them before, they work a little bit differently to your standard Vive trackers. They require no base stations and now also require no computer, which is pretty crazy. However, the computer is the main way you'll want to be using these, as it's just the most comfortable, and it's the way we'll be using them today. But in a previous video right up here, I do show you how to set them up with Quest standalone. No computer, nothing like that, server running entirely inside the Quest. So how do these trackers work? How are they different? Well, they track themselves. They use sensors and IMUs in order to calculate their positioning. With all the trackers put together, they're able to calculate a rough estimate of where your body parts are, throwing that into Steam VR and essentially making full body tracking. I know that that's a very general explanation, but everything you need to know is that these things don't require base stations and work entirely on their own. Meaning there's pretty much no occlusion and you can hide under blankets if you feel like it, but it also means tracking accuracy isn't sometimes as high as it would be on base stations. However, as you'll probably see in a second, that doesn't seem to be an issue for most. One goes on your chest, one goes on your waist, two go on your thighs, and two go on your shins, as well as feet. There's different packages that you can buy, and of course I'm going to leave a link to all of this, including their Discord, down below. Slime VR is entirely open source, meaning not only can you buy the device, but in case you don't want to do that, you can also build your own. It's also compatible with a variety of different boards and chips, meaning you have the option to build something yourself for possibly a lot cheaper, as the community has been working incredibly hard to bring out updates to the firmware and to the software. Last we took a look at Slime VR, their software was still super bulky. I'm pretty sure it was built on Java and looked like something that came out of Windows XP. And while it worked, now the community has built something that looks super super modern. Not only that, but this UI is fully portable and can be run on the Quest or any other Android device, which we talked about before. It's pretty crazy how far they've come. So enough blabbering on there, let's jump right into the software, let me show you what it looks like now because this is pretty crazy, and let's turn on a few of the features that I was recommended to turn on, then jump into the game and see how well these work. So here is the brand new software UI. You can see it's looking a ton better than what we had in the past. We've also also updated all the firmware on my trackers today, meaning they are running the latest firmware and hopefully we will get all the goodies that come with it, including better tracking. So to get your trackers going, all you do is you connect them to the computer and then let the software recognize them. Once the software recognizes them, you can connect them to your Wi-Fi via the software. I've already done this, so when I turn my trackers on, they just appear right in the software. Now the way these trackers work is they connect via Wi-Fi, so you don't need any additional dongles or anything like that in your computer. as long as your computer is connected to the internet, these things will work no problem. I just realized my LED strips died. When did these die? Then, once all your trackers show up in the software, you want to select each and every single one of them separately and map them to your body parts. You might want to place a little sticker or something on them to remember which one goes where, as I've done with mine. Once you've selected which tracker is on which body part, that's pretty much it. You can jump right into your favorite game and check out the tracking accuracy. So, let's jump into VR chat and see how well these work. So as you can see, here now in VR chat, these things are working really, really well. And with a bunch of the new features that I was recommended to turn on, they're working
working better than ever. These were already my main tracking solution, however, somehow I've managed to completely not update them throughout the entirety of my using them, which is pretty crazy, as I've been missing out quite a lot it seems. Now we're going to try out some of your guys' favorite poses, as well as with of course different avatars as well, as some of you guys hate me using anthropomorphic avatars, as they are apparently not the same proportion as humans. So sitting, how well do these things do with sitting down? As you can see, they take care of sitting no problem whatsoever, as well as lying down and sitting on the floor as well, in case you don't want to be sitting on the chair. And as I've mentioned before, laying down you can now also lay down under a blanket, and they don't care about that either, as there's pretty much no occlusion, unless your blanket's made out of uh, steel, in that case that might block some internet, but other than that, as long as you have a normal blanket, you should be just fine. Spinning around, no problem. Jumping up and down, no problem. Now, what I like to try on these, and this one is a little bit crazy, is I like to do a little handstand. Now, I don't know how to actually do a handstand, so I will be using the wall to help me, as I don't really want to endgame myself today. As you can see here, these things also handle the handstand, no problem. I was actually more worried about my Quest Pro's tracking failing here than the trackers themselves, as if the Quest Pro's tracking fails, the trackers also fail, as the trackers are using the headsets tracking in order to stay in one place, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Now, I haven't experienced much drift in these trackers pretty much ever, and I mentioned that in every video we make about them, but what they've introduced now is going to make it super, super handy for you guys using OSC in VR chat, meaning standalone full body tracking on the quest, and also for anybody that wants to reset their tracking in general. What they've now introduced is double tapping your chest tracker in order to reset positioning. And I've been told it works really, really well. So let's try it out. All we have to do is double tap our chest tracker and you should see all the trackers beneath my avatar reset their positioning. And as you can see, that works really, really well. All these features and settings can be turned on inside the software and tweaked around to make it work exactly the way you want. This is what's so handy about having an open source project, a passionate community behind it, working on these, adding features, features, telling other people what they would like, and then other people working on it and introducing those features. It's truly incredible, and the community behind Slime VR is truly amazing. If you guys want to, check out their Discord, which I am of course going to leave a link to down below. And literally today, I was texting Aaron in order to find out how to update the firmware for my trackers, and I was told that they are literally just now pushing an update for Slime VR. So we are on the latest update to the minute, which is crazy. As you guys can see, these trackers work really, really well, and the community behind them is updating them on a regular basis. And when I say regular, I mean regular. Like, updates are coming out basically every week, sometimes even daily, which is crazy. And the fact that they're open source, again, you guys can build them yourself right now in case you don't want to be waiting to order them, which is really, really nice. I have a feeling maybe one day we should actually just make a video DIYing them. I think that would be nice for those people out there that would like to make some of their own. And with that being said, thank you all so much for checking out today's video. I hope you guys have a fantastic day or night, wherever you are in the world. And that is today's update on Slime VR. Hopefully we'll get to make Make another one of these very very soon where we might be working on something in the background and i don't want to spoil anything for you guys but you know slime is closer to releasing so we may be working on something but other than that thank you so much to the patreon supporting this channel you guys help me out a ton paying my bills paying my subscriptions and helping me make these videos better and for the rest of you guys check out our discord check out our reddit down below where i want to see you posting your spice memes and as usual if you want to be notified of fish content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead ding my bell and see you again in the next video Peace.